and worship him he delights in showing mercy this afternoon and we are so grateful the next song says because God is the greatest power we shall never be defeated this song hits differently today as we just got off a zoom call with our mother and every and anything seems wrong but today I've just come to declare that we shall never ever be defeated no matter what you may be going through this morning this afternoon we shall never be defeated and so i truly believe that today so let's not just sing these words but truly believe them and declare them until we believe them amen hallelujah
This moment right now to lift up holy hands to just begin to declare you are holy wherever we are we know you are there you are holy and father move by your spirit today move by your anointing today move by your power today somebody needs a word from you change us with your word wash us with your word encourage us with your word father we thank you for your word now father as we prepare for this worship experience we declare even right now because you are the greatest power we shall never we shall never we shall never be defeated there is no defeat in the people of god we are triumphant we are victorious because of you and we claim that same victory right now in the name of jesus we pray thank god and all of god's people said amen 
Amen. Amen. Listen, you see me with my coat on today because our furnace uh, had some issues today and we're getting those corrected right here and right now. And so at the very last minute, we made a decision to uh, cancel our physical worship opportunity. We tried to get the word out to as many of you as possible, but there's some of you that still showed up. And so we're going to have church in our coats today and nothing is going to stop this praise. Now, I want to be very clear. I've always stated to each and every one of you that you have an opportunity whenever, whenever we have a Sunday morning experience, unless the Lord would cause us to close the doors, you have an opportunity to be with us. You have an opportunity to be in our midst. Uh, you don't have to ask. If it's snowing, I'll be here. If it's raining, I'll be here. If it's hailing outside, I'll be here ready to worship the Lord. And you have that opportunity wherever you are. I want you to turn your sound bars up. I want you to turn your speakers up because we're going to have church today. We're going to have an awesome time in the presence of the Most High God. Amen. 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 I want to go right into the word of the Lord. I want you to stand those who are present for the word of the Lord. We're going to Genesis chapter 38. Genesis chapter 38. Genesis chapter 38. And we're going to read starting at verse 28. Genesis chapter 38. And we'll read starting at verse 28. And of course, we'll go to verse 30. I'm going to read from the new, I'm sorry, from the King James Version. I'm going to read from the King James Version today. You'll find these words, and it came to pass when she travailed that the one put out his hand. And the midwife took a bound, excuse me, took and bound upon his hand a scarlet thread, saying, this came out first and it came to pass as he drew back his hand that behold his brother came out and she said this is the midwife talking she said how hast thou broken forth this breach be upon thee therefore his name was called Perez and afterward came out his brother that had the scarlet thread upon his hand and his name was called Zara. Today, just for a few moments, I want to preach from this subject and I think it's apropos and very appropriate um, for today. I want you to put this in the comments and I want you to declare it, fight through it. Somebody say, fight through it. Say it like you really mean it, fight through it, fight through it, fight through it. God bless you. I want you to make sure you can be seated at this time, those of you who are present. But I want to make sure that every person who knows that you've been fighting through some things today, I want you to share this message. And if you know of a friend or a loved one who has been fighting uh, lately, I want you to send this to them right here and right now because we got some stuff we got to fight through. Fight through it. My brothers and sisters, I love watching movies. I love watching movies and, and a movie that I think most of us, if not all of us, have seen. Uh, it's called The Color Purple. The movie The Color Purple is an amazing movie. It is one that we all of us just about grew up on. But there is this scene that, I, I, that, that kinda just hit me in my spirit this morning as I was preparing to come to church. There's a scene where Miss Sophia is having a conversation with Miss Seely. And in that conversation, she starts off by saying, all my life, I had to fight. She starts talking about all of the folks that she had to fight and talking about all of the times in her life where she had to fight. But she says something that strikes me. It, she says something that I think many of us can relate to. She said, although I've had to fight all of these people, I never thought I would have to fight in my own house. 
I bring that to your attention today because there, I believe, are many of us uh, that say I've had to fight in many instances. I've had to fight on the job. I've had to fight in my friendships. I've had to fight in every area of my life. I even have had to fight on Facebook because people don't like what I post. But, but I never thought I would have to fight at home. You know, fighting is different when you got to fight at home. It's, it's different when the person that you're fighting is sleeping in the same bed as you. It's, it's different when the person that you are fighting is, is they live and reside under the same roof. Has, has there been anybody in here that knows what it's like when you just get tired of fighting? You ever been tired of arguing? Have you ever been tired of trying to prove yourself to people who say they're your friends? Have you ever been tired of trying to, to give uh, an appropriate explanation to people who should know your heart in the first place? I need to know, is there somebody who knows what it's like, who understands the frustration of being tired of fighting? I'm tired of fighting this 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 message today is for somebody that knows what it's like to have to fight every day sometimes you got to fight to keep your mind sometimes you got to fight to not say the wrong thing to somebody who has pushed your button sometimes you got to fight to keep your head on straight because the folks at work keep trying your patience i wish there was somebody in the comments today that knows what it's like when it seems like you're fighting everywhere and if i got to fight at work and if I got to fight, you know, outside and if I got to fight on Facebook, at least don't make me have to fight at home. This text is is important to us because it deals with two babies who are still in the womb and they are fighting to get the birthright. They are fighting each other even though they have the same DNA, even though they have the same mama. They are fighting in the womb. They get their start even before they are born. They're already fighting to be significant. I, I bring that to you because I believe today's message is for somebody that knows that you've had to fight through some stuff. You've had to fight through people who didn't like you. You had to fight through people who tried to keep you limited so that you would never get the promotion that you've been desiring. You've had to fight to make the type of money that you make. You had to fight to keep your marriage together. I need to know today, are there any fighters in the building? Are are there any fighters who are streaming today that can say, I've had to fight for quite some time and I, sometimes I get tired of fighting. And so the story starts off here in, in verse 28. It starts off with these words that I think is going to help some of us today. The writer, the author starts off by saying, and it came to pass. And it came to pass. It came to pass. Can I tell you something to help you understand the significance of that one phrase that I think will help you all week long is simply this. Many of us understand that, that, that storms come in our lives, that even storms, rainstorms and, and, and snowstorms and all of these storms come. All of these storms come. But here is one thing that is true about any storm that you've ever experienced in your life. The storm came and the storm passed. Every storm, it doesn't matter how hard it was, it doesn't matter how severe it was, there has never been a storm in the history of this world that came to stay. It, it never came to stay, it always came to pass. And why do I bring that to your attention? Because there's somebody in here that's saying, I'm going through one of the worst, one of the worst storms of my life. I'm going through a storm in my marriage, a storm in my finances, a storm in my family and it seems like I'll never make it through it seems like I can never overcome this but I need you to understand the one thing that holds true about every storm is it comes to pass in other words it never stays your storm does not have staying power I need you to put that in your notes today your storm whatever it is no matter how many tears you've had to cry your storm does not have staying power and that is why you can be excited and that is why you can give God a praise in the midst of 
of your storm because it does not matter how severe it is. It does not matter how much pain it has caused you. One thing that is true about every storm is it comes to pass. Somebody just get excited right now and say, I don't know what you're going through, but one thing that I can tell you is it's going to pass over. The storm is going to pass over. The depression is going to pass over. The financial hardship is going to pass over. The anxiety that you're feeling right now, tell somebody it's going to pass over. You ought to be excited about that if you know it won't always be like this. It won't always uh, struggle. You won't always have to struggle this hard. You won't always have to cry like you've been crying because the storm is passing over. Your tears will pass. Your depression will pass. The turbulence in your marriage will pass. The anxiety has to pass. The trouble on your job will pass. The dissent in your family, the fact that y'all can't get along with each other, you never agree on anything, but tell your neighbor it's going to pass over. You know, we had a snowstorm overnight. I, when I went to sleep, there was no snow for real on the ground. You know, it was a few flurries out there but there was no snow for real on the ground when I went to sleep but when I woke up this morning the snow uh, was covering my sidewalk I couldn't even see the sidewalk this morning we got to shovel the snow because the snow storm came and it came while we were asleep but here is one thing many of us make the mistake of thinking that because we can still see snow on the ground we make the mistake of thinking that the storm is still here and the storm is already gone and I need somebody to understand that many times what happens is we find ourselves being distracted by what the storm left over, the residue of the storm. And you think that you're still in a storm, but tell somebody that storm is long gone now. It's passed over. I may have some stuff to fix and I may have some things that I got to recoup. I may have some things that I got to put back together, but I can be excited because I know the storm is already gone. And I want to speak prophetically in the life of somebody who is in the building, in the life of somebody who is all the way across the world that's watching our stream. I want to speak that you you may have some stuff in your life that you got to fix. You may have some things that you got to recoup, that you got to renovate, that you got to get back together. But I wish somebody would just declare the storm is already gone. The storm has already left my family. The storm has already left me. And from here on out, I'm just getting it back together. I wish there was somebody in here today that can say, I know you see me struggling right now, but the worst is over. I'm on the cover up. I'm getting myself together and I speak over with Demon Love Church today to let you know you are officially in a season called recovery. You are in a season where you're going to get back the stuff that left you. You're going to get back the stuff that walked away. You're going to get back the money that left you. Tell somebody you are in a season called recovery. I wish somebody would just help me declare that all in the atmosphere, all over at your house, all over your money, recovery, recovery, all over my children, recovery, all over my marriage, recovery. I'm getting back everything that God has for me. I don't have to wait until the snow dissipates before I acknowledge the storm has passed over. I don't have to wait until everything is clear before I realize that what was once holding me bound has already left me. It's already passed. I got some stuff to fix, but the storm has already ended. The writer shares a story of a mother who's at the end of her pregnancy. And she's ready to give birth. But, 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 the, but the Bible says that, that he starts the conversation with, it came to pass. And, and the next thing that happens, the next word that I want you to see in the text is the word travail. I need everybody to put that in your notes. I need you to highlight it. I need you to make sure that you save that word travail. Somebody in the comments say travail, travail, travail. That word is very important because we have lost sight of this phrase or this word or the action travail in church. 
because many of us we want to come to pretty church we want to come to a church that is convenient and a, a church that is comfortable and so we don't give God a praise unless they push us hard enough we won't clap our hands unless somebody tells us to we don't want to drive through the snow we would rather stay at home because we don't know how to travail anymore I want to talk to you because for many of us we have raised a generation of a church that is so docile that that anything can knock them off their square but I believe that there's some folk that are streaming today that can say I came ready to travail I came ready to fight for what's mine I came ready to fight for my family I came ready to fight for my mind I wish there was somebody that can say I don't need materialistic stuff right now I'm fighting for my life I'm fighting for my mentality I'm fighting to remain peaceful tell somebody don't forget to travail this text is important because it says it came to pass that at the time that this lady who knows that she's pregnant and she's getting ready to give birth the bible says at her time of travail that's when something phenomenal something miraculous something that is not uh, uh something that is not normal tends to take place and i want you to know the reason we got to get back to a time of travailing is because that is a time where the supernatural is released the reason that you got to get to a place where you can say listen I don't mind getting ugly in praise I don't mind clapping my hands until they hurt I don't mind running and shouting and screaming can I tell you the word travail is, is, is how it's spoken in the KJV but you got to know that in the New Living Translation that same word is replaced with another word called labor it help us to illustrate this point to imagine a woman who is getting ready to give birth to her baby and, and during that moment as she's getting ready to push during that moment as she's getting ready to give birth they call that labor and you can't have labor without some labor pains you have you ever been in a room with a woman who is getting ready to have birth she started off being cute she got her hair done before she went in there she got her little pretty bag she got some push gifts you know to make her feel good it starts off real wonderful but there comes a time in the delivery room I feel the Holy Ghost up in here there comes a time in the delivery room where she stops caring about how her hair looks and she stops caring about whether her eyelashes are on right she stops caring about the push gifts and if you push her enough she'll start kicking folks out because she can't care about the opinions of other people because all she knows is it's taking everything in me to push out what God has placed on the inside of me and I need to talk to somebody that can say God has something big on the inside of me and I'm getting ready to push out what he has for me and I can no longer care about the opinions of other people I can no longer care you about are not the pig you have lost your frustration because you weren't the one that everybody called first. You lost your frustration because there were other folks in line for the same job as you and they looked more qualified. It looked like they were going to make it. It looked like they had it all together. But can I tell you that God has a habit of choosing the one that everybody else looks over. God has a habit of calling the folks that everybody else threw away. This Bible shows us that the baby stretched out his hand, that she put a scarlet thread on there. And, and the Bible says that that was not the baby that made it. Can I tell you that sometimes one of the things that you have to fight through is the opinions of how other people think your life should pan out. Sometimes what you have to fight through is how other people think your relationship should go sometimes you got to fight through who they think you should have chosen and who they think you should have picked and who they think you should be with and sometimes you got to fight through the opinions of others who don't understand why you raise your children the way that you do and they try to tell you how to raise your children and their children cracked out I wish somebody would talk to me they try to tell you how to raise your children and when you should whip your child and their child are talking back their children are acting all 
crazy. I, I need to talk to somebody that knows the frustration of fighting because other people are think they deserve an opportunity to tell you how you should invest your money. But here is what I want you to hear today. Here is the word of the Lord today for somebody. You get to decide your destiny. You get to decide where you go from here. You get to decide how you fix your life. You get to decide who you're going to marry. You get to decide how you spend your money. Your destiny is up to you. I told y'all this on New Year's Eve. 2022 is up to you. Stop letting other people tell you what your life should look like and how your life should pan out. That is a conversation that should be between you and God alone. I'm almost done. The Bible says the baby stretched out his hand. The midwife saw it and she said, that's the one. That's going to be the one that's going to get the birth white. Y'all watch me. I've been doing this a long time. I know who's going to make it. That's the one that's going to come out on top. And the baby brought his hand back inside. And then when the delivery took place, she ended up delivering the opposite baby from the one that she predicted. She ended up delivering the opposite baby. And the Bible says she was astonished because she didn't understand how this baby got out before the other one. And she said, I don't know how you did it, but I need to call you Ferez because you are a breech baby. You some way, somehow have broken forth. You started at the bottom, but you ended up on top. And this is where I want to end today because there are some people in here that can say, listen, I grew up without a silver spoon in my mouth. I didn't grow up on top. I didn't grow up with all of the money. I didn't grow up with a plan that could have taken me through this life. I didn't grow up into a family that understood generational wealth. I didn't grow up with a family that knew how to love me without it being toxic. I, I didn't grow up in that environment, but I want you to know that this is the last thing that I can give to you today. And that is where you start does not have to be where you stay. I need you to understand that how you start does not have to decide how you finish. I need you to understand that your condition, your current condition does not have to be your conclusion. I need you to understand that where you are right now, it may be your current condition, but it does not have to be your permanent condition. Tell somebody, I might have some things going on right now, but where I am right now is not my final stop. I need some Somebody to help me today to say I got somewhere to go. I have some things that I'm going to do. I have some things in my life that I still have time to do. Tell somebody this ain't got to be it for you. Tell somebody I know it's looking tough right now but this is not the end of your story. I got an anointing today to call you for rest. You are the child that's anointed to break out. You can break out of addiction. You can can break out of low self-esteem you can break out of your lustful desires tell somebody I'm about to break out I know it doesn't look likely I know the world thinks that I'm already on the bottom but tell your neighbor I'm about to break out I wish there was somebody in here today that can say where I am right now this is not the end for me the reason I can praise God in the midst of a travailing situation is because if I keep on praising him, he's going to do something that I never thought he could. I just need about 17 folk today that will give God a travailing praise, that will give God a praise that says, even if I got to look ugly right now, I'm going to give God everything that I can. Because I'm going to fight for my life. Because I'm going to fight for my marriage. Because I'm going to fight for my family. Because I'm going to fight for the promotion. Because I'm going to fight for the investment. I wish there was somebody here that can say I'm anointed to fight. Forget about being so docile. Forget about acting like you got it all together. But I need somebody in here that can say I feel a fight coming on. 
I'm anointed to fight until I get the position. Fight until I'm no longer bitter. Fight until I'm delivered. Fight. Somebody put that in the comments. Just say fight until you get your mindset. Fight until you get the peace in your house. I've got a decision to make. I'm fighting for everything that belongs to me. And get this, y'all. I ain't got to wait until I got no cheerleaders that are telling me that I should fight. But I wish there was somebody in here today that can say I can fight by myself. Don't you understand? And I'm just about done, y'all. That the fight did not stop. Once the two babies got out the room. But sometimes you gotta have enough audacity to fight while you're in it. Fight while you're struggling. Fight while depression is looming. Fight when your money gets tight. Tell somebody I'm fighting for it. Because I believe that it won't always be like this. That I won't always struggle like this. That I won't always have to cry like this. That the furnace won't always be messed up like this. Tell your neighbor I got a reason to fight. Because I know God has something in me that's bigger than what I have right now. Open up your mouth and give God a praise that says I can fight while I'm in it. I can dance through the storm. I can fight through depression. I can fight through low self-esteem. I can fight through the antagony. I can fight when all hell is breaking loose. Whatever my lot thou has taught me to say, it is well. And I got to get out of here. I've been here long enough now. It's time to turn off the stream. But can I leave you with this, y'all? It is well. Whatever touch on the behind us, whatever you're going through right now, just say it is well. Point at your family and say it is well. Point at your children and say it is well. Point at your wallet. Point at your wallet and say it is well. I see the bills piling up, but I got an anointing to fight until something breaks. Tell somebody I'm anointed to fight demons. I'm anointed to slay devils. I'm anointed to destroy yokes. I'm anointed to get my family together. Tell somebody you got fight in you. You got a reason. I feel the Holy Ghost, y'all. And I praise him by myself because I got some fight left. I got a feeling that everything, it's already all right. The healing is on the way. The deliverance is on the way. Your future is already in alignment. It's about to happen. You better fight like you never have. You better fight like you know God is healing. You better fight like you know God is delivering. You better fight like you know healing is on the way. I got to fight for it. I'm anointed to fight. I know it looks unlikely, but I'm anointed for this. I started at the bottom, but look at me now. I started with nothing, but look at me now. I told y'all we got to get out of here. But would you just tell somebody, I got to look at me now, praise. Because if only you knew what I had to go through to get here. If only you knew the hills that I had to climb out of. If only you knew what I had to do. Tell somebody to look at me now. Look at me now. I'm saved and glad about it. Look at me now. 
my money's coming up look at me now I can forgive and let it go look at me now you ought to look at me now after all that I've been through I still have joy I still have peace I still got a praise I still got what I need to take me to the next level look at me now I know I wasn't your pick but look at me now I know you thought I was never going to amount to anything but look at me now I know you thought my children were never going to be about nothing but look at them now I know you thought I never was going to get a house of my own but look at me now Sometimes you got to remind yourself of how God turned it around and look at your neighbor and say, but look at me now. I'm done. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Now henceforth and forevermore, I decree in the name of Jesus that there's some fight left in you. I decree in the name of Jesus that you got enough to make it. You got enough to overcome. You got enough to start over. You got enough to be healed. You got enough to be delivered. You got enough. Tell somebody it don't look like much, but I got enough. <laughs> it don't look like everything that other folk thought about, but I got enough. It don't look like what I thought I was going to have by now, but I got enough. And I'm going to take the little bit that I have. I feel the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to give it to God. And God's going to do it seeding abundantly above all you could ever ask or think. Tell somebody, I got enough. I got enough. I know it's been feeling crazy, but I got enough. I know it's been hard times, but I got enough. I know I cried a whole lot of tears, but I got enough. I know things didn't work out like I thought they would, but I got enough. Enough to start again. Enough to heal. Enough to look in my right mind and tell the enemy, I got enough. Y'all, I promise you I'm trying to get out of here. But there's somebody right there at home. And you screaming and you decided, I'm going to travail in my bedroom. I'm going to travail in this house. I'm going to open up my mouth and give it to him. Because can't no devil in hell stop this place. Can't no demon stop this worship. Can't no rumor stop doing this. Tell somebody your praise may not look like somebody else's, but tell them it's enough. It's enough to get you to the next level. It's enough to get you through a tough season. It's enough. Somebody's praising him right there. Somebody's praising him right there. I ain't talking about the pretty praise. I'm talking about the praise that makes demons flee. I'm talking about a praise that's getting your family back together. I'm talking about a praise. Devil, you thought a furnace was going to stop this praise? You thought a furnace was going to stop this word? We came ready to fight. That's it. I hope you got a word. But I hope this 
helps you understand for the rest of the week whatever challenge comes whatever obstacle comes whatever type of opposition comes you gotta say is that all you got today i'm telling every demon that tried to shut down this worship experience is that all you got just a few lies is that all you got just a few pink slips is that all you got just a few arguments is that all you got didn't they tell you i was a fighter didn't they tell you i was more than a conqueror i got more than what is coming against me i got enough i am enough my family is enough my money is enough god's gonna give me the anointing to stretch I've got enough. So fight through it. I hope you got a word today. And I want you to know something. This is the moment right here and right now. So keep on praising God. But I want you to give God a praise. Not just out of your mouth. Not just while you clapping those hands. But I want you to give God a praise through your finances let him know god i've been through some things and money's been tight lately but i refuse to let the enemy constrict me i want you to give god a serious seed today that says listen god i choose to trust you i might have some things going on right now but i choose to trust you i might have some areas that i don't have figured out just yet but i choose to trust you today we are a tithing church and those ways to give we are placing those on the screen on the uh, screens and i want you to make sure every person every person who is streaming today you have a responsibility to sow into this word you have a responsibility to tithe you have a responsibility to stretch and today when you're giving you're saying to the enemy, you can't stop what God has ordained in my life. Maybe I didn't start on top. But tell somebody, I'm coming out first. I'm coming out first. And I am anointed to fight. I'm going to pray over the offering and then I want to pray for every person. Maybe you're streaming for the first time today. And you need a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. We want to give you that opportunity. We want to make sure you have an opportunity to know the Lord Jesus Christ for yourself. But let's pray over the offering. Father, bless every gift. Bless every giver. Bless every person. That you know this word pricked their heart. You know what they've been fighting against there's somebody that's saying man all my life I've had to fight and sometimes fighting gets tiresome sometimes when you fight too long you start to experience fatigue my prayer is that God you would strengthen your people that you would help them to know they have enough no matter what it looks like no matter what other people said about them no matter the opinions of others who are just watching from the sidelines you know that you've already placed more than enough in them I speak that there shall be no lack associated with the people of God and I speak in the name of Jesus that every person will not only stretch themselves to give today, but Lord, that you would anoint their homes, that you would anoint their finances, that you would help them to see they have enough. And what they don't have, more is on the way. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. And all of God's people said amen. Clap your hands and give God some praise.
clap your hands and give God the glory. Now listen, if any person who is in our uh, sanctuary today, if you need an envelope, you have that opportunity. You can just w uh, raise your hand and we'll make sure that we get to you. And those of you who are streaming, those ways to give have already been on the screens. And nobody is exempt. Don't get so comfortable at home that you forget to sow. That you forget your responsibility is to tithe. We give a special thank you to all of those who are here. Amen. That didn't allow me to be in here in the cold by myself. It'll be fixed very soon. It'll be fixed before next Sunday. But I want you to know you've got enough. I want you to know this church has enough. I thank God for all of the leaders who are here. Give God praise. Minister Mike Lakey is here. Amen. All the way from Chicago. <laughs> all <laughs> He started to clap and didn't know I was about to say his name. Uh, Minister Michael Lakey is here. I love you. Glad to see you. Amen. Welcome home all the way from Chicago. And I thank God for all of our leaders who are present and our volunteers who uh, made their way here in the name of Jesus. Just a few announcements. Black History Month is coming up and you have an opportunity to be a part of this Black History Month. We have a few things going on. We wanna start, we wanna start Black History Month by uh, on the first Sunday, instead of us dressing in our regular all black or our black and white, uh, we're going to wear, uh, we're gonna buy black. Everybody say buy black. Buy black, I want you to put that in the comments. We're gonna buy black and we're gonna wear um, anything that you've been able to buy Hopefully it has something that is uh, black affirming, any type of quotes or anything like that that you can uh, wear. We're asking you to wear that on the first Sunday of February. Um, you can go. There are plenty of places where you can go. And actually, um, I don't know. What's, what's Stephanie's uh, social media? What's the name of her social media? The, well, that's pretty easy to remember. The Mrs. Stringer has a, a company where she makes shirts. And if you guys put your order in, um, you know, I don't know what the prices are, but she'll be able to uh, take care of you. Uh, that's one of those who are connected to our ministry, and we want to make sure you have an opportunity to do that. But you can go anywhere. Uh, Target has a black section uh, during this season where those funds are going back to black businesses. So you can go there. You can go wherever you so choose. Just buy black. All right. So that's the first thing. But you also need to know that we are doing a TikTok challenge as a church and it's called Talk Black to Me, just like Talk Black to Me. It's called Talk Black to Me. And what you'll do is we're going to create some sound bites for you and you guys will be able to um, have your own interpretation of people like Maya Angelou, Martin Luther King, uh, other icons, Denzel Washington and others. Uh, and we're going to have some fun as we celebrate some of the black icons in America. So you'll hear more about that and um, you'll see it. We'll email it to you. We'll text it out to you so you have the instructions. And the winners of the challenge, we have some money that we're going to be giving to you. So you definitely want to be a part of it. And we'll let you know more about that in the future. Again, we are praising God for and we're praying for all of those who are bereaving at this time. Angela Mills, her cousin, uh, passed away and he will be funeralized on this upcoming Saturday, the 29th. And uh, so we want you to know, Angela, we are praying with you and for you. And I'm thinking, um, am I missing anybody? Oh, Snoop. I didn't tell you, but Snoop, our bass player, uh, we're praying for him and with him. His aunt passed away. Uh, great lady, amen, over at Open Door Church of God in Christ. Wonderful, wonderful lady, sweet lady. And she passed away on this past week. And so we're praying for Snoop. I mean, his real name is Alan Evans. Uh, uh, we're praying for him as he is bereaving him and his family. And 
uh, Superintendent Evans, uh, which is Snoop's father, is a, a mentor of mine. So we're praying for him as well, uh, along with the entire family. Amen? All is well. All is well. We love you, and let's pray our way on out of here. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for reminding us that you are God. I pray, Father, that if there's someone who needs to be saved today, that you would save them now that you would heal them now, that you would deliver them now, and that you would keep us connected to them as we help them grow closer to you. Save now, heal now, in Jesus' name. Now, Father, as we leave this place, but never from your presence, protect us and keep us. We plead the blood of Jesus upon every life that is represented in this room and those who are streaming. And we stand on your word that no weapon that is formed against us shall be able to prosper in jesus name we pray thank god and all of god's people said amen repeat after me if you need to accept the lord jesus christ lord i'm sorry please forgive me for all of my sin i believe in jesus christ i believe you died i believe you rose again on the third day and i believe you live even today Father, I welcome you into my heart. Change me. Transform me. From this day forth, I am saved. If you prayed that prayer, send us a comment so we can stay connected to you. We love you, and we'll see you on Wednesday for our virtual Bible class. And, back, and next Sunday, we will be right back here in our rightful places. I love you, and I'll see you next time. Be dismissed in Jesus' name.